I want to give a shout out to Dexas World, my friend in the Philippines. Click on his channel also, I've just put the link below and watch what he's doing. Today I want to talk about the egg cycle. Most farmers are frustrated that my chicken are not laying. Don't say that your chicken are not laying or rather they're not giving you the correct required number of eggs. I want you to understand the egg curve. Chicken start laying from the age of 22 weeks and they lay up to 18 months. But laying starts from week 22 going upwards up to week going upwards up to week 36 between week 36 and week 52 the egg production is now peak and then laying again starts dropping from week 56 downwards all right so between week 22 and week 36 laying increases slowly and by slowly exponentially all right don't expect your birds to start laying a hundred percent at week 22. So the laying will go up slowly by slowly, but by the time the birds get to week 36, laying is between 94% and 96%. So try your best and ensure that the birds at week 36 to week 52 have no stress at all. They have been vaccinated very well. They have been completely debicked. Such an example, this bird has been debicked. So, because when you debick a bird at that age, the birds tend to be very, very much stressed. So, then production will not be at 96%. The production will not be at that targeted percentage. When you see your birds start decreasing the number of eggs, they try to understand the exact age in which the birds are in. The birds could be between week 56 and 72. Scientifically, the egg production will decrease. All right? So don't expect a very high number of eggs at that age. All right? Instead, play about with the matrix of the feed. When the birds are increasing the egg production from week 22, going upwards in an upward trajectory up to week 36, increase the feed from feeding a bird 90 grams per day going upwards up to feeding it 105 grams per, per, per day. So what I'm trying to say is when you're feeding the bird at 90 grams per day, that is the start of laying. As the bird keeps increasing the feed, also keep increasing the amount of food. Sorry. As the bird keeps increasing the amount of eggs, also keep increasing the amount of food. So that by the time you attain week 36, week 36, your egg production is towards 94%. So at this time, the bird should also be feeding on an average of 105 grams per day. So you've pushed the bird from feeding 90 grams, laying 0% at, at week 22, pushed it to 105 grams with increase in egg production, the bird is laying 94% at week 36. Also give it more feed, 105 grams. So between that period of week 36 and week 52, you'll find that the birds are so much stressed in that they are at their peak production. Try to supplement the bird on a weekly basis. Let's say this week you give them a vitamin, skip a week, then introduce them again on a vitamin, just to supplement the amount of nutrients, or rather the amount of required, uh, required ingredients, sorry, just to supplement the bird's nutrients that are being taken out in terms of egg production, all right? Because you understand at this time, the bird is losing a lot of calcium. When the bird is at week, Let's say week uh, 20, the bird consumes a lot of... The, the, you'll find that when you're formulating the feed at about week 20, the feed is... the prelia ration, or rather the grower's ration, has a high level of calcium. This calcium is stored in the medullary bones. So that when the bird starts laying, 
The calcium is then brought from the medullary deposits and used to form the egg, the eggshell. So as the bird keeps laying, it keeps losing much calcium, it keeps losing much protein. And this one can only be supplemented in feed. You increase the feed. So between week, between week 22, between week 22 and week 36, the bird is feeding on 90 grams, going 92, going up to 100. By the time you hit 96% production, also be at 105 grams. When you start decreasing the production, that is between from week, seven, from week 56 going downwards, also start going back in terms of feed. Start reducing from 105, so that by the time you are hitting week 72, the birds will be laying 50%. You are at 90, 90 grams of feed per day. Now, if you do agribusiness, or if you focus on making a profit in terms in layers, the egg curve is something you have to really much give attention. Why? Between 36 and 52 weeks of age, that is the time you as a farmer, you need to recoup your cost of investment and a profit. So that anything you'll get between week 56 and week 72 is a profit or is a bonus. So try and ensure that when you are at week 36, you have debicked your birds. And I'm happy Mr. Karugu got his chicks already debicked and got his chicks already pre-vaccinated against the common biggest problem that chicken farmers are facing Newcastle disease. So then at week 36, your birds are debicked, your birds are, your birds are vaccinated. Because these two things are always a source of stress. When you debick a bird at that time, the beak takes some time to heal. When you have a huge flock of birds like now here, you'll find that 5% of the birds will have their tongues injured. They will not lay. When you lose an egg a day, you are losing a coin a day because the cost of production is maintained. So now, I'm assuming you have debicked your birds at the right time. I'm assuming you have vaccinated your birds at the right time. What can be another cause of stress? What can be another reason for your birds to drop in production? The other major reason can be feed. I'm happy you mentioned you have a consistent supply of feeds. You're using a consistent brand, which is Pembe. Whenever you change the feed, you bring stress. And you're trying to make sure that if you want to make a profit in layers, no stress at week 36. That automatically means don't change feed at that time. Very important. What can be another cause of stress at week 36 so that the birds can't lay? Changing handlers. Handlers are people who feed your birds. I'm happy he is feeding his birds himself. He's giving them drink water, water himself selling his eggs himself, taking everything in the market, collecting feed. I must give you a high five for that. <laughs> so make sure, make sure you don't bring another person to handle your birds at week 36. These birds are used to you. When you bring in a visitor or a new person, they get stressed. And any stress, it drops the egg production. So. If you try to do this on a day-to-day basis, and that is between week 36 and week 52, when you check your records, automatically you'll be a smiling person. Just to mention, the very last thing I mentioned is Newcastle disease. You could have vaccinated the birds, but then there is an outbreak in the surrounding. So you'll find that you get an egg that is soft-shelled. That should not worry you. Your birds are already vaccinated. So what you can do then, do not give them an intramuscular vaccine. I hope you know that vaccine, the, the injection for, for Newcastle. 
At this time, you only need to give them the water, the oral vaccine, which is you do it. I'm ho I hope usually do it after every two months. After every three months, you induce, introduce it. You introduce it so that you, you then have those those controlled chances of of, of the of, of the disease. Then maybe the most important thing I could say as I'm finalizing, I give a congratulatory message to my host today, Mr. Karugu. I found his birds very healthy, disease-free, correct number of feeders, and more than that. Actually, I've bought something new. You should buy something new from his system of drinkers and take home and keep up the spirit. I'm sure you'll get so many congratulatory messages and uh, farmers will also wish to look up to you and hear from you. Whenever they need to hear from you, we shall always give them you, you, a shout out in your contact so that you, you are a motivation to everybody. Thank you. Cheers so much. So we shall help him feed the birds.